help America. Dana's trying to beat me up. All right. So much for that joyful, happy warrior Kamala Harris went all gloom and doom in a highly negative closing argument. Trump bash fest. Donald Trump, Donald Trump, Donald Trump, Donald Trump, unstable, obsessed with revenge, consumed with grievance, and out for unchecked power. America was born when we wrested freedom from a petty tyrant. These United States of America, we are not a vessel for the schemes of wannabe dictators. But how rich is this? After spending most of her speech bashing Trump, Kamala wants to be a unifier. I'll be honest with you, I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. But here's what I promise you. I will always listen to you. I pledge to seek common ground and common sense solutions to make your life better. I am not looking to score political points. Unlike Donald Trump, I don't believe people who disagree with me are the enemy. He wants to put them in jail. I'll give them a seat at the table. Oh, my face hurts listening to that. And of course, the media was lapping up every word. I think it was both her best speech, it was her most important speech, and the location of it made it literally iconic. This is exactly what the Harris campaign hoped that they were going to deliver, that she was going to deliver. What we saw was that joyful warrior. We yeah. saw someone that was presidential, most importantly. We saw someone that was ready, that was competent. This is a damn good speech. She did a very good job delivering this speech, and I think it was probably the most important speech of her life thus far. Harold, I, I go to you first. Now, listen, you are one of the most smooth-talking human beings I have ever met in my life. What word would you go use? And, and I'm just saying, like, I just would like to say, and Jesse, I believe you would agree that when it comes to talking, he is smooth. Like, he can, I don't understand why you don't run yourself, but it's not about that. The question is this. When you're hearing her speeches, are, does it bother you at all that no one's saying, wow, man, that was really smooth? She spent half the speech talking about Hitler, and at the end talking about, I, I want to work with everybody. Is that confusing to you? So, substantively, I would have done it, I would have done the speech different. Oh, I'm no. Um, and, but I, I give her this, I think one of the uh, announcers we had, or one of the uh, hosts of one of the other network shows said that it was really smart in the location, and I think she said one other thing was, I think the location was great. I like watching things. Dana's taught me a lot of lessons about PR. One of the things I like doing is watching things on mute. But having said that, Tars, I, I think that the visual is so powerful. That, and, and I think someone else said she looked presidential. Those flags, that White House in the back, uh, you put it on mute. It, she, she got what she needed out of that last night. And again, I still hope the next five or six well, days the, we're positive, the problem positive, is, is that positive. When you turn mute on, that <laughs> changes the entire I mean, speech. You're walking through and, an airport. Or, I hear you. I yeah. hear you. I don't, I don't want to but, talk oh, over wow, you. Let me hear what you say. Whoa. Uh, Jesse, you're a stat number guy. You're a fat guy 24-7. Let me throw I some am? numbers at you. You're always facts. You're never, you're never feelings. You're a rock. Okay. <laughs> sure. Listen, she mentioned Trump 23 times. Yeah. She mentioned inflation zero times. Yeah. She mentioned economy one time. Talked about money twice, prices twice, middle class twice, although those were about her, and financial stuff three times. So the, the entire bulk of her speech was... Trump, Trump, Trump. This cannot be a good formula for winning. Just factually, if you were her campaign manager, would this be the numbers you'd want that were all you talked about with Trump? Does that sound like a winning team's final pledge to America? What speech? No one's talking about the speech because Joe Biden blew it up. Yes. Joe Biden couldn't let Kamala have this moment. This was supposed to be his moment. This was supposed to be his close. Yep. And look what he did. He wouldn't let her have it. And this guy's been ruminating about the coup for months, can't get over it. He's a resentful old man who now Kamala has a restraining order. She's not allowed to go anywhere near this guy. <laughs> he was within walking distance of this speech, didn't get a ticket. Ever since he said lock Trump up, they haven't, they've been quarantining him at the White so House. So he was upset that she was on his lawn. So she <laughs> was on his lawn, get off lawn. my, my lawn. lawn. <laughs> and they hand the guy a laptop for a Zoom. Now, you know what Bidens do with laptops. It's not good. You never want to give a Biden a laptop because it's always going to be a disaster. So he gets out there on the Zoom and just screws up her closing message. And 
what is she going to do now? Everyone's talking about this. Oh, let's say the nice things. Okay, here are the nice things. Her hair looked great. I agree. Uh, the lighting was perfect. But I have sources there that said she walked out on the stage and no one cared. And my source is Johnny. He was at the Ellipse. And Johnny's she's talking about sword. there was 100,000 people there. He said there was 30. And you know how they got 30, Tyrus? Buses. Bus lists. Wow. He overheard these Facts. two women talking Facts. about, are you on Facts. the bus list? Oh, I'm on the bus list. And so what they do, if you're a government worker in Washington, you get on a bus list. They have your cell. They have your address. And then you just say yes. And then the buses come in and they pick you up and they bring you to political rallies. That's how they get people in the stands for this. The two pillars of her speech were ridiculous. One, Trump's a fascist. Two, she's going to bring the country together and solve problems. <laughs> But two biggest no lies problems. anyone's ever heard. Dana, you've yes. been on the other side of this. You've been in the political war rooms and stuff like that. Mm. Do, does this sound like a, a, a team that's winning? Or is this panic mode? Well, I agree. If her, if her speech was that great, we would have been leading with it in the A block. Yes. What happened is that Joe Biden stepped on it and killed her momentum. And I'm sure she's furious about it, but trying to make, you know, lemonades out of lemon. But the thing is, like, if that, that's the easiest thing to invite him to. You don't get a speaking opportunity, but, sir, you get to sit right here and watch. That would have been a nice thing to do. Instead, he's on the Zoom ruining her whole thing. And I also am going to disagree on, I, like, honestly, sound off. Yeah, it looks good, but what is it doing? It's reminding you that they have been in charge at the White House for the last four years. And the majority of the country says the country's headed in the wrong direction and that they blame Biden and Harris for it. So I don't think the venue was that brilliant. Can I say just one thing, though, Dana? I mm -hmm. think the reason I say the mute, we're at a 50-50 race. If he was ahead by seven or eight points, her opponent being Donald Trump, then I'd say, you know what? You got to do something different. They are appealing to a very small sliver of Michiganders, Pennsylvanians, and whatever you call people from Wisconsin. Wisconsin that's what that's yeah. Wisconsin nights. So I, I don't mean to be... Uh, but like, but honestly, the, you're looking at the president's bedroom when you're looking at that. I hear, but if you live in those states... It was after 5 o'clock. They're, not, they're not as attuned. I just, I thought it was a, I thought it was a pretty powerful visual. I would agree with you on the substance of the speech, but the power Judge, of the visual was pretty zero clear. inflation, 23 chumps. That can't be a formula for winning. I don't think that the uh, visual was powerful. I disagree. It reminded me of the Joe Biden speech for the soul of America, where he had those oh. Marines behind him, and it was like blood red, and it was dark. It was like, to me, the same backdrop. But I listened to the speech. And because to me, you know, it's more than, you know, just looking at the woman and whether she looks presidential. And nobody gives a damn as to whether she looks presidential. It's what she's going to do for them. Number one issue is the economy. She's responsible for it. She broke the, vote, the tie breaking vote on the American Rescue Plan, the Inflation Reduction Plan. Uh, and the other is immigration. She lied last night. I mean, I had to read the transcript transcript again. When I am president, we will quickly remove those who came here unlawfully. Say what? You're the one who allowed them in. You're the one who wants to decriminalize it. You're the one who said that Donald Trump was responsible for the bill not passing, which allowed 7,500 in a day. I mean, uh, she, she, they think we're stupid. And this, she's going to prosecute the cartels. I'm sorry. I'm a broken record. I am sick and tired of this. You're a prosecutor. Get your but to the border and prosecute if you're so good at it. And she says, we want to give Border Patrol the support that they need. She called ICE the KKK. She's a liar. She can't deliver. She caused the problem, and only he can fix it. Not even her pretty hair can save that, Jesse. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else. Vessel, vessel, scheme, scheme, lapping up, lapping up, ruminate, ruminate, ellipse, ellipse, chomp, chomp. If you enjoy this content, please consider subscribing to my channel to stay up to date with future videos. Thank you for watching.